This is Al Brooks, and this is my price action trading course. This module is about some things that you have to consider if you're just starting out as a trader. What's the big picture in uh, trading? It's actually fairly simple. You buy at support and you sell at resistance. If you're long, you um, wait for a rally up to a resistance level, and you start to scale out of profits and that creates a small pullback. If the market goes higher to another resistance level, you continue to sell out. If you're uh, uh, short and the market is going down, um, you're going to uh, buy at a support level. And uh, if you're flat and the market goes down to support, you look to buy. If you're flat and the market goes up to resistance, you look to sell. It's no secret. You know, Just turn on television and look at Fast Money, Options Action, Money in Motion, uh, Fox Businesses, and CNBC, and listen to traders. That's all they do all day long is talk about, oh, the market is coming down to a support level, or a gap down, but it's right at a support level. I think I'll buy. Or, um, oh, it's a, we had this big bear breakout, and now we're rallying, but it's testing the breakout point. I think I'll sell. You don't hear them saying, oh, there's a dark cloud cover or a morning star or um, a harami pattern you know they're not talking about candle patterns they're talking about support and resistance sometimes you'll also hear them talk about oh wow the market is really strong i'm going to buy or i'm going to buy calls you know the bull market the market's racing up so in other words they see the market as in uh being in a bull breakout and they um they buy and they don't sell out at resistance because they assume resistance will fail and they look for any reason to buy. They'll buy at the market. They'll buy a, a strong bear bar. They'll stro buy a strong bull bar. They don't care. You know, they just know the market is going up and it probably will be higher. So they're going to buy. And then a strong bear breakout. Um, they don't. They don't pay attention to candle patterns. Uh, they're going to sell because they know the market is going lower, or they feel strongly that it will, and they believe that all support will fail and that the market will just continue lower and lower and lower. And they'll look for any reason to get short. And you, you will never hear them, or only rarely ever hear them, talk about a candle pattern. You know, so the context, where we are in the market cycle, uh, the strength of uh, the market, uh, all the bars to the left, that's much more important than the candle uh, patterns. Management is the key. You know, you're buying at support, you're selling at resistance uh, most of the time. Uh, during the strong breakout phases, which happen maybe 5% of the time, uh, you're trying to get um, in the market immediately for any reason. If the risk is big, let's say the market's in a strong bull breakout and you see that the stop has to be far below where the market currently is and you're afraid of um, taking uh, a long, either you trade very, very small or you use options. You know, Options are an alternative to um, a very wide stop because your risk is contained. Uh, also, sometimes you'll hear traders who are long on television uh, and the market has gone a long way and the logical stop is far below and they don't want to risk that much. So they'll replace their stock position with options. So they'll sell out of their stocks, take their profits, and then buy a call or buy a call spread because they don't want to risk to where they have to risk uh, given how far away the logical stop is, let's say the most recent higher low. Beginners always want trading to be easy. You know, Al, why can't you tell me what the perfect trade is? Why can't you tell me the perfect setup? Um, you know, I want to make money. I'm willing to work really hard. I'm willing to study. Uh, I deserve to make money. But it's not. You know, what, what beginners fail to realize is that there are institutions on both sides of the market at all times. For you to be able to buy, an institution has to sell it to you. For you to be able to sell, an institution has to be able to buy the other side. And both the bull and bear institutions are profitable. And, um, you know, they're making, how can both make money if one side's buying and the other side's selling? There are lots of ways, but it all comes down to management. So, for example, if you're buying and a bear institution is selling, uh, they might be willing to sell in more higher. They might be willing to scale in. They might be uh, hedging and offsetting the position in another market. You just don't know. The the bottom line is it's not going to be easy. Trading is always going to be hard because you're trying to take money from institutions and the institutions are profitable and uh, there are institutions on both sides. So the margin is always going to be small. 
beginners want an edge. They want to be able to buy, a, you know, uh, some magical signal that's going to work all of the time, all the time, or a very high percentage of the time, with very little risk. But if you think about it, if you're going to be able to buy with a potential for a huge reward and very small risk and a high probability of success, there has to be an institution willing to do take the opposite side of the trade, and the institution won't do it. And because there's no institution who will take the other side of your trade and willingly give you money, your perfect trade cannot exist. Also, traders feel like everything that they've done in life, if they work hard, they get paid. And if they work hard, uh, they deserve to be paid uh, here as well. You know, let's say they're a furniture maker and they make a chair, uh, they get paid. If they make 10 chairs, they get paid uh, 10 times much, you know, and 10 times as much for all their hard work. But that's not how the market is. You don't get paid simply because you work hard. So you can study all you want. You can learn candle patterns as much as you want. You can uh, force yourself to be as disciplined as you want, but you don't deserve to get paid. It's like a 40-year-old baseball pitcher uh, who made a fortune through his career, and now his 90-mile-an-hour fastball is down to 84 miles an hour, and batters just hit him uh, like crazy. Um, he, that 40-year-old that pitcher can work as hard as he wants, but he's no longer going to get paid you know, because th that's the nature of the business, and trading is the same way. You don't get paid for hard work. You get paid uh, for being good. You know, life is not fair, you know. You can look at people on television who appear to be rich. You can uh, listen to people say Goldman Sachs uh, makes a lot of mo money or hedge funds make a lot of money. Uh, and therefore, I deserve to make a lot of money. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a human being. I have the same human, basic human rights. You know, I deserve to make money too, especially if I'm willing to work hard. But that is not true. You don't deserve uh, anything in trading. And nobody does. And Goldman Sachs... Um, they're as good as their last trade. If they start to lose, um, you know, trade after trade after trade, um, you know, they will, they'll go out of business. Again, as I said, perfect trades do not exist. Beginners always want them. People are always asking me, Al, what's the best um, setup? Uh, there is no best setup. Look at the charts. The market is trading all day long. Uh, and that means institutions are buying and selling all day long. You make money by doing what they're doing. So you look to buy and you look to sell all day long. And you just try to find setups where there's an edge and where you have some advantage where you can structure the trade and manage the trade in a way that will likely result in you being profitable. But even at your best, your edge is going to be small. You know, so first of all, you have to get good enough so you have an edge, a mathematical advantage, a mathematical likelihood that if you do what you're doing 100 times, you'll end up with a profit. And your edge uh, can uh, come from taking low probability trades. So you can be right 40% of the time and lose 60% of the time and still make money if your system results in uh, taking winners that are several times greater than your losers. Candlestick patterns, I think they're a fraud. Uh, I was looking at the internet the other day and Google searching how to trade. Uh, to get ideas about um, you know, what my competition is doing in terms of courses. And it looks like everyone is pushing candlestick patterns. And it's as if that's the way to make money. And it's not. You know, look at tele uh, traders on television. When's the last time you heard a trader talk about a candlestick pattern? They don't talk about them. Goldman Sachs and hedge funds, they're not using candlestick patterns. Um, High-frequency trading firms, they're using tick charts. They don't even see candlestick patterns. Candlestick patterns are being sold by false prophets as a means of uh, taking you to, um, you know, trading heaven. And that's just not the case, you know. Um, they give you false hope, and that is not how traders make money. Uh, a setup is composed of two things, a candlestick pattern, in other words, a signal bar, and or a signal collection of bars, and a context. Context is everything to the left. And that is far more important than the signal bar. For example, if the market's in, in an extremely bull, strong bull trend, it doesn't matter what the candlestick pattern uh, shows. You're going to buy. If it's a bear, strong bear bar, you're going to buy. If it's a strong bull bar, you're going to buy. If it's a weak bull bar or a weak bear bar, you're going to buy. The, context, the context overwhelms the candlestick pattern. 
On the other hand, if it's in a pretty strong bull trend and you're looking to sell, you only want to sell if you see a very strong bear reversal bar. Most of the time, uh, starting out, you should not be giving any thought to selling in a, uh, in a strong bull trend or buying in a strong bear trend. You know, you'll lose money. Um, uh, trading, you know, it takes years to get good and you, know, you will lose money for years. Most traders lose forever. However, we're all attracted by the uh, lure of making a lot of money and uh, being able to uh, get a multiplier effect. You know, when I was an eye surgeon, um, I could do one operation at a time. I could not do 10 or 100 at a time. As a trader, I can trade one contract, but I can also trade 10 contracts or 100 contracts. And everyone is uh, intrigued uh, and lured uh, by the possibility of, uh, you know, making, uh, becoming rich. And that's why we're all here. You know, it's fun and the upside is huge and we want to find out if we can do it. We know that people do it. You know, Goldman Sachs, hedge funds, uh, a lot of them are, are very rich. And that's why we're all here. We all are, are attracted to the po possibility that we can figure it out to, uh, well enough to uh, become billionaires. And that's okay. But you have to remember that everyone loses for years and that most traders who try this end up losing forever. And if you're uh, looking for um, perfect trades and um, you know, profits to take you to salvation, uh, you will lose. You know, the only way to win is uh, by doing it yourself, you know, learning enough to do it, you know, learning su uh, some successful systems and um, being uh, disciplined and doing the right thing day after day. So what kind of chart should I be using? Uh, price action techniques work on all types of charts because the movement on charts is simply a reflection of human behavior and any chart captures that behavior. For most traders, a good starting point is a five minute chart or maybe even a 15 minute chart, assuming they can trade small enough so that the increased stop size does not cause them to um, put too much money at risk. My rule of thumb for somebody starting out, in fact, for, for anyone, even very experienced traders, is to avoid any chart with more than 20 bars per hour. So that would be a three minute chart. Most traders should not be even trading a three minute chart. And they certainly should not be trading a 20 tick chart or a, a 500 uh, share chart or a one minute chart or two minute chart. Why not use a small time frame? High frequency trading computers use the smallest time frames. They use tick charts and many of them make a lot of money. The risk is obviously very small. And if you have a winning system, why not use it 10 to 20 times a day or 50 times a day instead of just uh, three or four or five times a day? You can do manual high frequency trading. You know, Paul Rotter uh, does hundreds of trades an hour uh, by hand. And there are some day trading websites that recommend trading on a one minute chart or a 20 minute, uh, 20 tick chart in crude oil or in the currencies. Um, this is uh, simply manual high frequency trading and if your techniques are good uh, you can make a fortune and that is absolutely correct. However, there's a problem. 99% of great traders cannot make money using them year after year. And if you try, your account will slowly or quickly disappear. And why is that? You know, why, why not trade on one, one minute chart? What's the problem with a one minute chart? The risk is very small and that's very appealing to beginners because their accounts are small and they, the one thing they're most concerned about is risk. And if they trade a one minute chart, the stop is closer uh, to their entry price and their risk is less. Uh, and the logic is great. If you have a winning system, why not apply it 20 times, 50 times a day, 100 times a day? You'll make that much more money. Time is the problem. Deciding to take a trade takes time. Deciding how to manage your trade takes time. And our brains are not designed to make that many decisions uh, correctly in so little time and to make them so many times a day. You know, uh, I'm a very smart guy. And um, years ago, I could trade the one and two minute chart. Um, but it was very hard. Plus, it was not fun. And I, I was not making any more money than uh, when I trade the five minute chart. Because 
it's it's really hard to do. You end up cherry picking, uh, especially after an hour or two of trading. You know, you get tired, you lose focus, and invariably, once you start to cherry pick, you'll you'll find that you tend to pick um, all the the bad cherries. They look great, but they tend not to. They tend to end up being the worst ones. The market, the way the market is structured, it's always going to generate the most pain. So the trades that look the easiest usually are losers. And it's very hard to make the decision um, when you have very little time. And so if you're giving yourself, if you're trading a one minute chart, you're making, you're giving yourself seconds uh, by the time the bar closes to make a decision whether or not to take the trade. And it's simply not possible for 99% of successful traders to do it well, day after day, year after year. So those websites that promote that kind of trading, it sounds great, you know, little risk, big profit. Um, the reality is very few traders uh, can do it successfully, you know, for a career. We're not talking about doing it successfully for a few days or a week or even a month. We're talking about doing it for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And I think most traders simply cannot do that and it's not worth it because you can make a lot of money doing something else and you'll enjoy what you're doing much more. What's the alternative? Well, before trying a one-minute chart, first prove that you can be profitable, consistently profitable on a five-minute chart. And if you can, simply work on increasing your volume, the position size. And in the end, you'll, fake, you'll make far more money um, than by reducing your time frame and increasing the number of trades. Uh, taking five to ten trades a day on a five-minute chart, for most people, is going to be vastly much more profitable than taking you know 20 or 30 trades a day on a one minute chart in fact you will you will lose money if you try trading one minute charts first of all you should be very selective and don't worry that some traders take 10 20 30 trades a day if you take simply the one to three best trades a day you're in a good position to um, make money what are the best trades i have a module on best trades later in the course once you become consistently profitable, it's better to increase the size of your position than it is to increase the number of trades. Once you have the ability to spot you know, really good trades and you're consistently good at trading them, if you do the math, you'll see that you can do uh, very well if you just stick to the f several best trades that you see each day. For example, if you were to average just one point a day in the E-mini or 10 cents a day in the Spider, and you trade 10 contracts, 10 e-mini contracts per day, uh, making one point a day. That comes out to $100,000 a year. If you trade 25 contracts, $250,000 a year. If you trade 100 contracts, a million dollars a year. If you make four points um, a day on 100 contracts, that's $4 million a year. So you're starting to make uh, income um, comparable to professional athletes. The key to making money, you have to follow what the institutions are doing. And you have to have the attitude that I don't care. That's absolutely critical. You cannot care about anything. You have to be uh, totally devoid of um, emotions when you're trading. Remember, most of the institutions that you're trying to follow have their trading done by computers. Uh, maybe half of the volume is traded by high frequency um, computers high frequency trading programs and maybe 25 percent is done by other computer trading and all of the computers uh, use every conceivable variable um, in their um, algorithms and they're all based on math emotions are not a variable you know they don't um, place trades based upon fear or anxiety or worry or um, hope or um, you know wish right emotions are not part of what they consider so if you're feeling emotions and the emotions are influencing your trading decisions you are not doing what the computers are doing and it'll be very very difficult to make money so feeling worried hopeful you're restless you're carefree uh, you're tired if you have any feeling at all if it's interfering with your judgment then uh, don't take the trade you have to get to the point where you really don't care. You don't care about anything. Now, I understand that feelings, you're always going to have feelings. 
um, but you have to get them to the point that they don't interfere with your uh, decisions. Um, and there's one important thing that you can do to minimize the effect of feelings on your decision making. And that is um, you have to trade small enough so you honestly do not care. Okay, If you care, you will not be objective. If you care, you'll not follow the institutions. If you care, you will lose money. Um, if you care, that usually means you, you really want to win or you really hate to lose or you're afraid of losing. Um, you know, it will make you lose money. And the only uh, sensible way around that is to trade small enough so that if you lose, you don't worry. And if you win, you're not all excited or you're not desperate to win. Um, so you just trade small enough so that you can remain objective and your emotions don't interfere with your trading decisions and especially with your management of your trades. And that is um, you have to trade small enough so you honestly do not care. Okay, If you care, you will not be objective. If you care, you will not follow the institutions. If you care, you will lose money. Um, if you care, that usually means you, you, you really want to win or you really hate to lose or you're afraid of losing. Um, you know, it will make you lose money. And the only uh, sensible way around that is to trade small enough so that if you lose, you don't worry. And if you win, you're not all excited or you're not desperate to win. Um, so you just trade small enough so that you can remain objective and your emotions don't interfere with your trading decisions and especially with your management of your trades. Can anyone really make money doing this? Uh, absolutely, um, they can do it, but it's always going to be difficult because you're trading against the best traders in the world. Anytime you take a trade, there is an institution taking the opposite side of the trade, betting that you are wrong. So whatever edge you have is always going to be small. So you have to have very good discipline and very good trade management to um, make money long term. But some people make a lot of money. Do a search on Paul Rotter and um, you'll get an idea of, or also he's, he's in Wikipedia, you'll get an idea of just how much money a day trader can make. Here are a couple links and supposedly he was making about $60 million a year as a day trader. And sometimes he would place hundreds of trades an hour uh, in the uh, currency markets uh, just trying to make a few ticks on each trade. So he was doing high frequency trading by hand. He was a manual uh, high frequency trader and uh, he was very successful at it. All right, that's the end of this module on um, starting out. Thank you.